We'll go ahead and start with a word of prayer. Lord God, maker of heaven and earth, maker of all things that are seen and unseen, we give you praise, glory, and honor, Lord, and we ask you to help us to look into your wondrous word and to understand it. We ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible is the word of God, and all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and righteousness. Now, I thought I'd start with a defining what the firstborn is, because throughout the Bible, when the Bible is talking about the firstborn, it's talking about this primarily. I mean, we know that it's, it's the first child that is born, but the Lord, uh, this is, you'll get a wonderful understanding when the Bible is talking about this. Um, that's the first boat, birth, and that's where the, the soul, when we are born, is attached to the body. It's attached to the flesh. That's what it is. And that's why if a child, a, a, a childs are exempted. But grown-ups, if you die like this, you're lost because you are attached to that. You're attached to the body. The second birth is when later on the spirit comes to dwell in the body and the soul is now redeemed. That's what that means. Re purchase. God has purchased, bought it back from the slave market. He got the soul back. And now the soul is no longer attached to the body. The soul is attached to the spirit and it's joined to the spirit, and this is circumcision. This is what, what, why the Jews do circumcision, and it's, and, it's, and, and it's a covenant given to Abraham by God, and that's literally what it is. You are no longer attached to the body. You've been circumcised, you've been cut away, and you're now, and that's why it's so good to be saved because at death, you jettison the body, but you're now, because the Spirit of God belongs to God. It goes back to the Father of Spirits. And when it goes, it takes the soul. Because he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So that is being born again, and this is the firstborn. So that is what the Bible talks about when it talks about the firstborn. And God says, he doesn't, he's not pleased with it. And because look, he gives us three examples in the Bible concerning the firstborn. Cain, Cain uh, doesn't want to offer the, the sacrifice that God wants. You have Ishmael, Ishmael is a wild man, uncontrollable. God can use that. And then you have Esau, and the Bible says, he hated Esau. I mean, a lot of people find trouble with that. So how can God hate somebody before they were ever born? That's why. Because he stands for a concept. God says, I'm not pleased with any of these guys. And so, even though, I mean, Abraham wanted Ishmael. He, God says, no, we can't have him. So look what it says here. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are cre were created. So everything is created for God. But when something is not working for him, well, it can go along with the program that God made. So that's the flesh. That is because God wants to use it, because he, there's a fallen world and God wants to redeem it. He wants to redeem the world and he needs a servant. He needs a, that's what he wants. But the flesh can never do that. The flesh will never serve God and therefore the Lord says, get rid of it, uh, as it were. So this is the thesis we're taking. Only Luke is with me, take Mark and bring him with thee for he is profitable to me for the ministry. That's the phrase I wanted to take and use as a, a thesis. For he, is, for he is profitable for me for the ministry. Useful as a servant. That's what that is. Useful as a servant. That's what God wants because God's got a program. He's got a, he's got a plan. 
and that's why he says, Paul tells us, don't get entangled with the affairs of this world because we're only passing through here. We're pilgrims. We're only passing through. And so there's, a, there's, a, there's so many people that need to be redeemed and, oh, they're everywhere. You know, I was talking to an Iranian, oh, no, a person from Afghanistan yesterday and he couldn't talk English. I just felt so sorry for him because we had a hard time communicating and I could see in his eyes a young man and I said, the Lord loves him, but I couldn't talk to him, you know? It's, uh, there's so many people like that. He is profitable for me, uh, he's profitable to me for the ministry. So this is where we left off. Um, we we're talking about the, the, how the priests um, or the Levites, how they encamped around about the tabernacle. Because God says, you, regular people can't do that. You can't come near God because we're not holy. He says, just for your own safety, you'll die. God is a consuming fire. We're not prepared in this body to come near him. Um, so it says, 36, and under the custody and charge of the sons of Mary Ra Rari shall be the boards of the tabernacle and the bars thereof, and the pillars thereof, and the sockets thereof, and all the vessels thereof, and all that serveth thereto. So, Merari is going to be handled in this. This is why they were given four wagons. And I looked at the word boards, it's split off boards. And that comes off a tree. And trees are useful if they provide a shade, or they provide a fruit, or they provide wood. For building or for the fireplace otherwise get rid of it you know why do you why is the tree good for except to feed termites so here we have the boards the bars and the pillars they're all wood folks they're all wood and and then you have uh, that's the structure that's the main structure 20 boards on the south 20 boards on the south eight boards on the west and no boards on the east and then sockets and vessels thereof. But the sockets, that's interesting because the sockets are made out of silver. Those, look what it says here, Exodus 29, 26, 19. And thou shalt make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards, two sockets under one board for his two tenons. tenons. Okay, so every board had two sockets of silver. Those are the ones that are gonna be touching the ground. And then the board is gonna be stuck in there. And that's what's gonna keep the board. Paul, if we could get into Ephesians, Paul says, fitly brought together. Every part in the body is fitly, fitly joined. I want you to remember that word, joined together. Um, and look at this, the wood stands for humanity, the gold stands for deity, the silver stands for redemption. We are covered, the boards are covered completely overlaid with gold. That tells you that we are hid in Christ. We are hid. We're told that. Paul tells us that we are hid. And, uh, and then of course, the whole world has been cursed. Everything here is cursed. The animals, the, the creation is cursed. It's now groaning it and travailing, the Bible tells us, because it's been cursed. And so God comes down because the soul is so important. I, I hate it when people compare people to animals. I know you can love an animal. You're, you know, it's okay. But I can never compare a dog to a child. You know, no way. I will never treat a dog as well as I will a child. I will never, you'll never find me, well, maybe you could find me talking to an animal. I mean, I have done it before. When I say, do you know what I mean? You know, they don't have a clue. Um, but we're, we're, we're not supposed to be cruel to them. We're supposed to be kind to them, you know, N not, not be cruel. Um, so this thing, this is joined, this is, how you, this is what keeps the boards together, the unity, and this is why God wants the unity in the church, unity, and they keep that, everything together. And look at this, I thought I, 
I was thinking of that verse, this verse, because look what it says here. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no one is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. So there you have, I thought, that's two pieces, the two silver pieces, redemption. The Father's hand and Jesus' hand, you can't, they, you can't pluck them both out of those. Uh, that's what keeps it. I, it's a light thing, but I thought I'd put it in there. You know, so let's continue. And the pillars of the court round about, and their sockets, and their pins, and their cords. This is everything that mirror, mirror Rari, the tribe, the Levites, that tribe, they were going to be in charge of all this equipment. And they had uh, four wagons for that, to carry all that stuff. The boards were massive. The boards were heavy. And all, the, all that other stuff. Here's a, here's a pillar. And these pillars were made out of brass. The base and the pole was made out of brass. And brass is judgment. And uh, there were 20 on the south, 20 boards, and 20 boards on the north, and eight boards, or 10, uh, 10 boards, or not boards, but uh, pillars, on the west side. And then you had three on the one side, on the east side, and then you had three on the other side, on the east side. Uh, that's six, and then you have four for the gate, or for, yeah, for the gate. So that gives you a total of 60 pillars. God uses, God, everything in the Bible stands for something. This is how I read the Bible. This is how I always go looking. I mean, we could even go farther, but I'm not going to do that because we'd never be out of the numbers, you know. We never would. So I thought 5 times 12 is 60. 5 is grace. So 12, what is 12? Well, that could be the 12 tribes, the 12 apostles, the 12 disciples. I mean, uh, there's so many 12s. And I think primarily that's, that's like, because look, look at this insight you get here in Galatians 2.9. And when James and Cephas and John, who seemed, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. So they're like um, protectors, people that, like teachers in the, in the church, you know, they, they, they're always looking. Uh, I know I am. Uh, when somebody comes in, you know, I want to know where they stand. And especially if they, especially if they want to work for the children, you know I'm going to be following them. You know I'm going to check them out um, because we're 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 like that. We 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 provide the fence with judgment to know. But those that encamp before the tabernacle toward the east, even before the tabernacle of the congregation, congregation eastward, shall be Moses and Aaron and his sons, keeping the charge of the sanctuary for the charge of the children of Israel. So on the east side was Moses and Aaron. They're going to be the east side. right before, And then on the outward, we already covered that, where all the other tribes were, were going to be encamping. They, this is that area, encamping round about. And God says, this is the setup. Because to protect the children of Israel, to protect them from coming near, because look what it says here. And the stranger that comes nigh shall be put to death. You just couldn't. Uh, often when I would teach the children, I says, if your football just wander off into that area, I says, you, you don't go running in there to get it. You call one of the Levites, hey, could you give me my ball? It's over there. It's, I don't want to hang out there. Um, I remember when we would play football on the flight deck of a carrier. It would be fine until somebody kicked the ball off the flight deck. And, well, that's that. That ended the game, because you can't get, get it. Uh, and all that were number of the Levites, which Moses and Aaron numbered at the commandment of the Lord throughout their families, all the males from a month old and upward were 20 and 2,000. Now look what's going on here. This is amazing. So remember, initially, Everybody was numbered except the Levites. The Levites were not numbered. Because the other numbering was for war. But the Levites were not in that numbering. 
But now Moses is told to number them, number the Levites. And look what the number they come up with. They come up with 22,000. 20 and 2,000. 22,000. This is the Levites. And folks, look at this. The Lord said in Deuteronomy 7, 7, the Lord did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest of all people. This is applying to, nation, to the Israel as a nation. This is, God says, you were the smallest people. And I've had people ask me all the time, why did God pick the Jews? Is this, it's his thing. I mean, there are little people, it's a little bitty nation. You can, I mean, you can drive the whole thing in one day pretty near. You know, it's, it's not that big. It's a small nation. Um, but this also applies to the Levites. Because look at this. Of all the tribes, and this is the numbers, the smallest one is, is Manasseh, 32,200. But the Levites are even smaller. So this applies to them too. The Levites were the smallest, or the smallest tribe. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out of them with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. He says, this is why, because he kept, our God is a promise-keeping God. If he makes a promise, he keeps it. This is beautiful when you find verses like that. Oh yeah, whatever the Lord says, he's going to keep it. He, he keeps his promise. Um, and he says, this is why, because he made a promise to the fathers, not because you were any special, because they're not. They're not any better than anybody else. They're just as crooked as anybody else. And Jacob, we started off like that. He was a crooked man. I would not buy a set of tires from Jacob. I tell you what, I would not buy a used car from him either. He tried me... He'd probably stick a banana in the gas tank and tell me that my grandmother drove that car but 10 miles every, every weekend. That's it. He'd be lying to his three teeth. That's Jacob as a planner. So we know that. They're not, God says, I only do this because I promised the fathers. And look at that. Now watch this. That word is affection. But the word a love in verse 7 means to cling, to join, okay? They're different words. Now watch this. Genesis twenty-nine thirty-four, And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. Ah, the plot thickens now. Levi, the Levites. Leah was the one that was not loved. She was the woman that, remember when he woke up in the morning, he says, hey, what are you doing in my bed? He married her. He didn't even know he married the girl. He thought I married the wrong girl. This is not the one. And uh, so people say, well, she, she had problems with her eyes and all that. Everybody, uh, there's a lot of commentators that say that. She had problems with her eyes. She, her eyes were kind of weird, or maybe she was cross-eyed or something. It's not it, folks. It's the fact that she's invisible. You can't see her. This is what the Lord is telling you. See how heavy the Bible is? She named him, join unto me. She wants him to join, or he, that... Leah stands for the spirit. That's what it is. That's why you can't see the spirit. Join unto God wants us to join him. He's got a, he, when he selects us, he wants, to, he wants us to join him. This is what is showing us here. So keep that in mind. And all that were numbered of the Levites, which Moses and, and Aaron numbered. Now look at this. This is, so I says, wait a minute. Gershon was 7,500. Kohath was 8,600. Mary Rari was 6,200. If you add them up, that's 22,300. I says, wait a minute, Lord. There's a discrepancy here. There's something fishy going on here. You know, I says, what is this? Where's the 300? What happened here? And you know, 
I have a place where I go a lot. When I, I get stumped in the Bible, and many, a lot of times I get stumped. So there's a place I go to that's called the Blue Bible uh, Commentaries. I go there a lot. And so I go down the, you know, uh, I have my favorites like Matthew and Gil, some of my favorites, but there's a lot of others. Um, and they all said, well, you know, the, the, the scribes, they're blaming the scribes for the translation. You know, it's really, and, and I says, well, maybe the Lord is just rounding the number, you know, 300, yeah, 300, what's 300, you know? But the Lord doesn't do that. The Lord has a reason for every nook, and, I mean, for everything. That's how you know the Lord. And once you know the Lord, his book is never wrong. His book is perfect. The Bible is without error. So settle that in your mind. And then when you study, this is, because look, one commentator, I think it was Gil, he says, there must have been four firstborns. I says, duh, of course, because the firstborn are his. The firstborn are his, so he's, he's doing a thing here with the Levites. He says, the Levites are going to be mine now. But the firstborn were already his, so no need to count, count those. Those are already his. I said, well, that makes sense. That makes perfect sense. Duh, that settles that. But then I was, I was in bed, and I, I thought of this. No, these are fearless. You know where I get that number? Look at this, folks. Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from the Mount Gilead, and their return of the people, 20 and 2,000. Duh, the Lord says, hello, and there remain 10,000. You know, the Lord, that's when the Lord told Gideon, that's too many people, you got too many people, they're gonna get the glory for themselves. Rather, you know what? Tell the people, whoever's afraid, go home. There was 200,000, I think, Midianites, and, and Gideon says, Lord, I only have 32,000 to go against that. You want me to get rid of what? And he did it. And 22,000 were fearful. They left the camp. That left them with 10,000. But 10,000. And then he said, the Lord says, that's still too many. Get rid of, uh, we got to weed them down. And the number, look in verse 6. And the number of them that lapped, put in their hand to the mouth, were 300 men. Those guys, those 300 guys were fearless warriors bad dudes those guys god says you take these 300 people we'll conquer the midianites but he was going to be with them so the lord can take two people or maybe two kids and he can still like david and still beat the whole army it's just that he wanted to prove that he gets the, he wants the glory not the flesh so what that tells us folks here because the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the lord the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you don't fear the Lord, and guess what, folks? Look at this. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. That's the firstborn. God says, I can't use the firstborn. Because they're, I can't use them. That's what, this is what he's telling us here. So the, the real count, and, in every, and I guess in every congregation, there's people that says, I'm saved. But if you really follow their lives, they don't fear the Lord. They don't fear the Lord. And then that's, the Lord says, I can't use them. They, 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 they're, they're fleshy, in the flesh. Those were the 300. That's why I believe, I believe this is why the 300 are not mentioned here. Because the Lord wants that number because he's going to use that number. Look what it says here. And the Lord said unto Moses, Number all the firstborn of the males of the children of Israel from a month old and upward, and take the number of their names. So they've already been numbered. Remember for war? Now he's talking to the law. Every, I mean, this is, this is another thing. Uh, things just, you got to pay attention because who, 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 who's talking and to whom he's talking. He's talking to Moses. Moses is the law. The law is set in stone. It says, okay, number the firstborn of Israel. They have been already been numbered, but they were numbered 
from 20 and up for war. That's a different numbering. This is another numbering. This is a numbering from a month old. That's brand new. Like your righteous baby. It's got that new vinyl smell in it. You know, it's brand new baby. That's, uh, that's what the Lord is saying here. We're counting them from the new, the new babies. Uh, from the, from, because this is what you had before. 603, 550,000 for war plus 20 but this number he's saying is different and the children of Israel now look at this I need to show you this verse too uh, the children of Israel journeying from Ramesses to Sukkoth about 600,000 I says there it is he's rounding up a number he did it again it's not 600,000 it's 603 550 I says Lord you did it again you round numbers up but there's always a reason but we're, gonna, we're not going to follow that because we'd be here all day. On foot there were men beside children, and a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds, even very much cattle. So the, a mingled people, and I think that's got something to do with it, okay? But from them, he's going to get... And now here's something else. Over and over he's mentioning, notice how many times the children of Israel is going to be mentioned. The children of Israel is mentioned many times, so that means something else, okay? Hopefully we can cover this. Um, now, here's the firstborn, folks. This is the firstborn, and this is, God said, these are mine, because they were purchased. God purchased them. How did he purchase them? With the lamb, with the blood of the lamb. Remember, in Egypt, to put the blood on the doors, and every, every, every firstborn in each house is going to be mine, if you put the blood there because that signifies that somebody died already. So the, the angel of death passed over that house. So God says, okay, those are mine. All the firstborn are mine. And thou shalt take the Levites for me. I am the Lord in, instead of all the firstborn among the children of Israel and the cattle of the Levites instead of all the firstborn firstlings among the cattle of the children of Israel. So God says, all the Levites will be mine. And now he's going to say instead. Look at that. Those that are joined unto me. Remember we've been talking about that word. Joined. Because that's what the Levites are. They're joined. That's, that's what Levites means. Joined. Those that, are Levi, those that are joined to me. And that's what happens. When you become a Christian. That's what happens. The minute you believe. You're joined. Your, your soul is now joined to the spirit. And you might not know what happened, but that's what is happening, you know. Um, you're joined. Those that are joined unto me, I am the Lord. And now he, that's what he's saying here, I think. All these are mine, all these, but not, not all of them were joined to me, you know. I'm, I'm taking the joined ones instead. Uh, instead of the firstborn among the children of Israel. And so even, even the cattle, he says, even the cattle, these are mine. Uh, it's a substitute. He's substituting. It's only 22,000, so he's going to take these instead, okay? Uh, instead of the firstlings. And even the cattle, he says, the offerings. So that tells me, folks, that the flesh can offer God things and they don't count. Paul says you can burn your body and it will benefit you nothing. It won't. I mean, you, whatever you offer to the Lord in the flesh doesn't count. Millions of dollars won't count. Won't help you a bit. And yet, two mites from a poor Christian, God says, now that's a lot. God's math is amazing. Um, now look at this, folks. These are the joint ones. When Israel settled the land, and then they divided. After Solomon, when they divided, the land was divided. Okay? It became the north and the south. Israel became the north and Judah became the south. And remember when the Levites, the Levites were not given any land. The Levites, they were given cities, 48 cities they were given, but no land. They were given cities. And when Jeroboam, the king that was established in Israel, the first king, after they divided, he says, no, I'm, I'm going to set up my own priestly system. 
the Levites says, no, that can't work. And guess what they did? They left. They left Israel. Look what it says here. And the priests and the Levites that were, all, that were in all Israel resorted to him out of their coast. For the Levites left their suburbs and their possession and came to Judah and Jerusalem. They left. The worst thing you can do, and I was thinking this is what happened to the United States in the 60s when they got rid of the Bible in, in the school. That's when it did it. That's, that's the worst thing you can do. And the United States went downhill from there on. It went downhill. That's when you start having the, the beatniks and the hippies and you know, all that stuff um, joined. And Moses numbered as the Lord commanded him all the firstborn among the children of Israel. He numbered them. These are now the firstborn. Those redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. And so those are the ones that Leah. Um, okay, now look at this. And the firstborn males by the number of the names from a month old and upward of those that were numbered of them were twenty and two thousand two hundred and seven and three score and seventeen. This is weird. I says, Lord, what does this mean? It's pretty near the same, but it's not. Because look at this number. 22,273. God says, I want the Levites, and there are only 22,000. So what's going to happen? He wants a substitute. But there's more firstborns. I says, that, that, that sort of means like that. That's, that's always, always the, the way it means. There, of all the uh, groups, there's, very, there's a different group that is really joined to the Lord. Uh, the substitute the Lord has taken. I'm going to take the Levites instead, he told Moses. So you have a problem here. What are you going to do with the 273? Because 22,000 can trade off pretty easy. You know, that's, there, you, there you go. That takes care of that. But there's a problem here. The, the firstborns, there's more. What do you do with that? And I'm sure that came up. And the Lord, Moses must have told the Lord, Lord, we got a problem here. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of the firstborn among the children of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle, and the Levites shall be mine. I am the Lord. Don't ask questions. That's just mine. You know, and, and so that's what Moses is going to do. The law. He says, okay. But look at this. That word take. Um, that just keeps accept accept the Lord to, so, because the law when God says the day you sin you shall surely die he can't get out of that you can't the Lord said that so there's no way to get out of that and so that's the law so take accept accept that for this it's a trade-up they're bartering the Lord says I'm gonna take them I'm gonna take the Levites so those are gonna be mine now and now you got a problem because you got 273 firstborns. They're out dangling out there. Well, what's going to happen to them? They're not. They should have died then. It's like they were never bought. And look what the Lord does here. This is, this is deep water. We're getting into deep waters here, I think. For those that are to be redeemed of the 203 score and 13 of the firstborn of the children of Israel, which are more then the Levites, okay, so the Lord says, how do, you want to, how do you ransom those? Here's how you're going to ransom those. The firstborn of the children of Israel. There it is, children of Israel, constantly being that. We're told that, which are more. And I looked at that word more. It says to be redundant, no longer needed or useful. What? I says, Lord, what does that mean? You don't need those people no more. Says, no, that's not what it means. It means that these people are not going to accept the blood. They, see, there's people among us that say, yeah, Jesus died, but I got to do this. They're canceling 
what the work of the Lord and they want to purchase their way to heaven another way and I believe this is what he's saying here and here's the way he's still gonna do it thou shall even take five shackles apiece by pole by the pole so he says the way to, to get away the way to get around those people that are left da uh, dangling there we're gonna have five shackles apiece that's what you do. Take that, accept five shekels. He's telling the law, accept, instead of the blood, accept the five shekels. I says, this almost sounds like crazy. I, I, can I teach this? I says, because Lord, the blood is the only salvation. How can, we're, still, we're getting into something strange here. It is, folks. And I tell you what, this is just something the Lord told me. So. After the shekel of the sanctuary shalt thou take them, the shekel is twenty giras, and thou shalt take the money wherewith the odd number of them is to be redeemed unto the Aaron and to his sons. Now that word there, that's another thing, the shekel of the sanctuary. It's a sacred weight. You couldn't mess with that weight. Out, out, out there somewhere the people could shave out the silver on the coins a little bit, you know, and they were doing that to get more silver. And even here in the United States, we got rid of the pure silver coins, and now you got a lot of copper in it. But this, you didn't mess with this. This was after the sanctuary, sacred weight. And so, and it says, it says it's 20 giras. That means something else. We're leaving it alone. Um, except... The number, there it is again, the number is redundant, that odd number, the odd is not there, the word there, but number is to be redundant. These people, and I think that's what it is, that's why he's talking about the Jews, the children of the Israel, because they are still out there, for, there's a remnant out there, and they're going on, this is how they started. Um, the Lord is doing something special with them, and Moses took the redemption money of them that were over and above them that were redeemed by the Levites of the firstborn of the children of Israel took he the money. Look at that. He took it of the firstborn. He took their money. He's taking it. He's accepting it. Twice we're told here. He took it. He took the money. He accepted it. I says, wow, this is true. This is something you, I, you can't really readily teach unless you teach the whole thing together because there's something here that the Lord is showing us. There's a remnant. The, the people, Israel is so special to them. The people of Israel, 1,303 score and five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary. So if you multiply that times five, this is what you get, 1,365. That money, again, that means something. We're not going to go there. I'm just telling you that he took it. Moses took it. He accepted it. Whoa. It's okay. He took the money. He took the... Those redeemed by the Levites. So, of the ch first one of the children of Israel took he the money. Look how the Lord just keeps on repeating it. He's taught. He's saying something. 1,303 score and five shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary it's a special weight and you look at that word again the lord is doing something special here the shekel and sacred weight the importance attached to something he, this is why he's doing this because look i need to finish this okay and moses gave the money and moses gave the money of them that were redeemed unto aaron and his sons according to the word of the lord and the lord as as the lord commanded moses the, the Lord said this. Okay, get that money, the 1,365 pieces of silver, and give it to Aaron and his sons. It's going to be accepted. His sons. And you know who that is? You know who the sons are? Us. The Gentiles. We're the sons. The sons that are come. We are it. We are the ones that are joined unto the Spirit. We are it. Look at this. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. They're beloved. 
Although there's some over there, they're still going this route because they, that's why they want to build a temple. Wow. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers. But there it is, from your fathers. That's the fathers, that's what they went with, that system. But with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. We know that. That's we know. Money can't buy you. But they're special. There, that's the number is grace. Five is grace. And who got the money? Look what it says here. Thou hast given us sheep. This is Psalm 44, 11. Thou hast given us, given us like sheep appointed for meat and has scattered us among the heathen. Thou sellest thy people for five shekels, for naught, for nothing and does not increase thy wealth by their price. God doesn't make money on this deal. But we do. We do, folks. And this, we, get, we learn so much. We do. We did. We gained. And that's why they were blinded for our benefit. And we, without them, it's a context. The Jewish nation is a context. And so when you study the Bible, it's a Jewish book, and you've got to study the Jewish mind because that's what's going to benefit you. That's what Paul tells us, you know. This is amazing. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, thank you for your kindness and goodness towards us. Thank you for your word, Lord. And uh, we give you the praise, the glory, and the honor, Lord. Help us now to prepare our minds to receive your word. And we ask this through your son's name, Jesus Christ, for beside you there is no God. Amen.